I'm Linda van Tilburg for Biz News, and with me I have today the Shadow Minister of Energy, Kevin Milam, to discuss the car power ship deal that the government has given the go-ahead for to produce gas to power at three South African ports. Hi, Kevin. Um, thanks for joining us. Lovely to be with you, Linda. So, what do you make of this deal? Well, the, the deal was done in terms of the Risk Mitigation Independent Power Producers Procurement Program back in 2019-2020. And the idea was that that was an emergency procurement of power. So it was going to bring in power for the short term to enable ESCOM to rebuild its, its fleet of, of uh, power plants and to enable new generation capacity in the form of renewable energy to, to come online. Well, we were, we were shocked by the uh, announcement at the time that they were looking at a 20-year contract with car power ships. And we actually called for an inquiry into, into whether or not car power ships had, had complied with all the requisite uh, criteria of that procurement process. Uh, the ANC first refused that inquiry, then they, they said, okay, we could go ahead with it, and then they rejected it as soon as it started again. So we ended up with a situation where uh, car power ships didn't get the environmental approvals, they didn't have port authority, uh, and they, they certainly didn't reach financial close on the deal at any point. They didn't have any power purchase agreements with ESCOM or anything like that. Where we are now is that they still don't have environmental approvals. They have been granted a special dispensation by the Minister of Transport to moor in the ports. Uh, that's called a Section 79 directive. They've been granted that. And uh, they still don't have power purchase agreements with ESCOM, nor have they, they reached financial close. So from our perspective, they did not meet the criteria. There was a deadline for them to, to meet all of those criteria. They did not meet the criteria, and therefore they should not have been considered in terms of the Risk Mitigation Independent Power Producers Procurement Program. So at this stage, they only have access to the harbors. They do not have the contract to supply the power. That is correct. And and in addition to, to having access to the harbors, they still have to build infrastructure. So they'd have to build pipelines and storage and, and grid connections uh, and in those various harbors to to enable them to proceed. And that's going to take a while. That's going to take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to do. Okay, so um, also the period that, I mean, 20 years, this is supposed to be a short-term solution. 20 Absolutely. years sounds like a long time to, you know, to sign up for this. 20 years is a ridiculous term. You know, uh, as I said, it's not emergency procurement if it's 20 years. They're talking something like 200 billion rand over 20 years which is in, in that time you could build two new Madupi and Kusile power plants based on the original budget costs. Uh, and, and that's just crazy. So we have said that we would, we would be willing to look at a short-term contract, a two-year to five-year contract, maximum five years, where we, we focus on building new infrastructure and building new generation capacity and then releasing the power ships. Obviously, there are concerns around the environmental issues and the noise pollution and the like. But given the state of the South African economy, uh, you have to say, well, electricity is our number one priority. So as what's interesting, the government signed this contract for 20 years, for 20 years. But the energy minister said, I think a day ago, that any fossil fuel exploration deal should be no more than five years. So, so, you know, there's a discrepancy here between what he says and, and, and the deal. So, first of all, the the contract hasn't been signed as yet. All that's been issued is a Section 75, a Section 79 directive. Um, there's still a number of, of hoops that have to be jumped through, uh, not least of which is the final contract with ESCOM, the power purchase agreement with ESCOM. That would be the last step of the of the process. Uh, there's also a number of court challenges that they're going to have to face going forward uh, because a number of NGOs and, and ourselves have said that if they consider a 20-year contract, well, we're, we're definitely going to, to look at uh, legal remedies for that. Oh, so do you think, uh, well, environmental groups are going to try definitely try to stop it? And you said you would as well. If, if a 20-year contract is, is what is being agreed to, then, then we would be looking at, at legal remedies and, and how we can we can stop a 20-year contract. Because the one thing about a 20-year contract is you have no guarantees about pricing. You're essentially just a price taker based on the gas prices in the market at the time. 
Um, I want to come back to your earlier question though about the the discrepancy between what is being said. So recently, President Ramaphosa appointed a new Minister of Electricity, uh, Minister Ramakopa. And Minister Ramakopa has been sort of like a spare wheel because you have the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Godan, under whom ESCOM sits. You have the Minister of Energy, Gwede Mantashe, who is responsible for energy planning policy and new generation. And now you've got this, this new Minister of Electricity, and no one's quite sure what, what his role is or what his powers are. And even today, we more than more than three, four months down the line, we still don't know what Minister Ramakopa is there to do. Now, Minister Ramakopa, the Minister of Electricity, came out and said, well, uh, he wouldn't look at anything beyond five years. But Minister Mantashe is saying, well, this is a, a great solution and it's something that we would look at long term. So you have these tensions within government that can't seem to agree. And, and honestly, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing within government. Well, should it go through, what difference would it make to um, load shedding? So um, even if it goes through, it goes through all the processes, it goes through court cases, which seems to be imminent again, um, you know, when can anybody expect any electricity from it? Well, the earliest, if, 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 if everything were to be approved today and the contracts were to be signed, the earliest we would be looking at electricity from the car power ships would be 12 to 18 months down the line. That would be the earliest we could expect electricity. Okay, so it, it wouldn't solve any problems for this winter, but 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 uh, there's going to be lots of hurdles. So what are these hurdles uh, that that you that everybody is putting in place? So the first Can you sort of just outline across, each each for us. Sure. The first hurdle that they've got to cross is the environmental approval. So they 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 have been uh, an appeal, or they have submitted an appeal to the Minister of Environmental Affairs. That's uh, Minister Barbara Creasy. And she has to consider whether or not they are going to grant them uh, environmental approval to proceed with, with that. That's the first hurdle. They've then got to get their, their finances in order and uh, present that to the National Electricity Regulator and to the Minister of Energy. And that's, that's the phase where you, you, you're getting to what they call financial close. And then the final hurdle is the power purchase agreement with... Uh, ESCOM, where ESCOM says, okay, we agree to buy your electricity at XYZ price. So, um, talking about the price, how would that affect what South Africans pay for electricity if it is approved? Well, we're, we're looking at a significant price jump in electricity uh, from car power ships because of the, the gas price. Uh, if we look at a short-term contract, we're probably looking at somewhere in the region of 5 rand per kilowatt hour for electricity, which is maybe three to four times the price that uh, we, we currently pay from ESCOM. So it would significantly add to the overall cost of electricity. And as I'm sure you're aware, our inflation is, is rampant in South Africa. The cost of living is spiraling out of control, as it is in other places around the world. I know it's the same in the UK. Um, but this would be a, an inflationary driver of electricity, uh, uh, of, of the economy. So even if it's more expensive, would the DA approve or give their support in the short term for that solution? The short term contract, contract, yes, I would. And I'll tell you why. You know, our economy has been in the doldrums for many, many years now, since at least 2005, 2006. We, we've really not grown as a country economically. Our unemployment rate is the highest in the world. And if you ask any investor, any business in South Africa, they will tell you that the single biggest challenge to business in South Africa, to, to investment in South Africa, to economic growth in South Africa, is the unreliability of our electricity supply. So what we can do is, in the short term, fix our electricity supply. Now, where my party governs, in the Western Cape and in the municipalities that we govern, we are taking uh, very, very proactive steps to procure electricity directly from independent power producers. Uh, to generate, the municipalities are looking to generate their own electricity. We're incentivizing rooftop solar. And all of those activities are going a long way to making the municipalities and province that we govern less reliant and, and ultimately, hopefully, independent of ESCOM. 
which would would give us a, a measure of of uh, reliability that we could offer to business investors. And what we're seeing is that the the employment figures in the Western Cape are significantly lower than the rest of the country. So the Western Cape is is almost half the average of other provinces uh, when it comes to unemployment. And and so that is just an indicator of how important electricity and investment in our economy is. Well, if you if you look at this deal and the or this deal that they are planning to sign, and the the twenty year lifespan of that, that would bind a next government if the ANC is voted out, which you guys are hoping for in two thousand and twenty four with a coalition. That's another conversation. Um, that would bind an, a a subsequent government to these terms for a Correct. very long period. I mean, two decades is a very long period. So, you know, what kind of resistance are you putting up to make sure that's not happening? So one of the things that, that is of major concern is the corruption levels in, in the South African economy, in, in any government contract, in any major infrastructure build or the like. And we are very, very concerned that this is just another funding mechanism for the ANC. We saw that we saw that with the builds of Madupi and Kusile where the ANC had a direct stake in Hitachi Power Systems, uh, which was a, a major contractor. And and so we're, we're concerned that this is just another way for the ANC to, to loot South Africa's economy. So we would, we would be absolutely against any long-term contract. Do you trust the partner on the other side of the table, Gore Power Ships? That's a... Very difficult question to answer. Uh, I have my concerns about the way that they've done business. I have some concerns about uh, the the stories and the allegations that we've heard about the tender process that was in, uh, implemented in the initial risk mitigation independent power producers procurement program. So as much as I have concerns about the the company on the other side, I also have concerns about the people in our government who are facilitating this, I guess. Well, Kevin Milam from the DA, thank you very much. Thank you.